Hello everyone, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play Quest for Glory for Shadows of Darkness, The Thief Path. Well, last time you remember, we got through the typical day three, training up, talking around town, chatting with people's stuff, and we also broke into the monastery, learned a bit about the mad monk who created it, and got the first of one of several rituals of the Dark One. But before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and show you something that, uh, never a silly way to die. We all know that this looks very ominous. We get some descriptions about how scary this place is when we first come here. This is a bass relief of a strange creature. It looks like an octopus with only six tentacles. You have a creepy feeling as if it is looking right back at you. And Igor chased us away from it, so what happens if we go to it? That hectopus has had the munchies ever since it got stoned. Fortunately for it, but not for you, it occasionally gets meals delivered right to its door. And just realized I forgot to turn down the volume before I started recording. But in fact, the way you were supposed to get into the monastery... You push the Dark One sign into the indentation on the door. It fits perfectly. You retrieve the Dark One sign from the monastery door, then quickly step away before the Hectopus can react. Or Hexapod, or whatever. Anyway. Point is, we did get away from it. And just for completeness sake, I'm going to show you another stupid way to die. The chief monster's acid spit started it by dissolving your hair, then your skin down to your bones, and so on. You aren't paying much attention after the skin part. Yeah, no, no honor among thieves trying to stab him that way. But, in point of fact... And I've already offered to help. I don't think we've got any new topics of conversation. I don't know. It'll be a shame. But we can give him the bag. That didn't do anything. That didn't do it. That didn't do. The bag makes you look a bit like the rumor guy. That didn't do anything. That. Welcome. Now let's offer help. Oh, very well. If you must be a hero, I suppose you could help me. You will need to break into the monastery through the upper windows. There is a secret passage to the basement somewhere in the main room. I know that. I think there was some sort of guard, too, but I threw something at it, and it went away. Yeah, you... Anyway, once in the basement, look for a small statue. Whatever you do, don't touch it with your bare hands! Bring it back here, and we'll see whether I will return to my dapper self again. Actually, I'm getting used to this shape. I can climb walls and ceilings really, really well now. I can run and be stealthy at the same time. Best of all, I never have to go... I'll see if now... That didn't do anything. That did Won't you stay for supper? I managed to find some nice, weak old bread soaked in the juice that collects at the bottom of the garbage can. I'm more than happy. Yeah, I think we do actually have to step away and then come back, and then we can give it to him. That didn't do anything. That did 
Oh, wait, wait. It actually has the statue listed as a separate item, so... Wonderful! Wonderful! I won't have to scuttle in the shadows all the time. I won't have to have unsavory eating practices. Thank you! Thank you so very much. And tell about the monastery break-in. You did very well. Very well indeed. I can tell that you will someday be a chief thief yourself. And tell you to be careful. All right, all right. I know I was getting careless. I am going to make certain no one ever touches that statue again. At least not by accident. And say you're welcome. You have such nice manners. Are you certain you want to hang around tough, brutal scum of the earth who will try to beat you up with the slightest excuse? Or is that your idea of a good time? Feeling like an idiot. Well, of course. And yeah, we can do that, so talk to him again, ask about the castle's secret entrance. There is a secret passage to the castle from the Boyar script in the graveyard. There is a special way to open this secret door. Something involving colors and the Borgov family crest, I think. You must be very careful. I know nothing of the people who now live in the castle. Only that the last thieves to break in never returned. And ask about the Thieves Guild. Other than the fact that there are no other thieves here, and that we are not likely to get any in the near future, this is a wonderful guild! If you excuse the fact we can't fence anything here, either. After I became such as I am, many of the members left. One thief said that I was no never s the one- And so yeah, we got that already. I am alright, I guess, but I'm having a difficult time adjusting to walking on two legs again. Other than the fact- I don't think we ever get any more useful conversation out of the chief. Going so soon? Good luck. But uh, one other thing we can do at this point, which I don't recommend, you'll note that we currently have an honor of 309. It's been said that there's no honor among thieves. Well, you've certainly proven that true in your case. The chief thief, recently recovered from his shape-changing ordeal, dies instantly beneath your onslaught. And of course, doing this completely cuts your honor to zero. You don't earn any guild points for pickpocketing corpses. Stick with the live ones, okay? You are so exhausted that everything you do hurts. Better get some rest. Yeah, I was checking him for loose change, but never mind. But really, there's no point to doing this unless you want to completely lose your honor for some reason. And we are exhausted, so this seems like a good time to go to the inn, get dinner, and unless I miss my guess, there should be somebody new there this time around. You hear me? After a few minutes. Have a seat! Wait! No, better leave the seats here! But why don't you sit down on one? This show can't get on the road until you get off your load, so sit a while and enjoy yourself. Or maybe just sit! Let's go ahead and greet. Thank you, thank you. I always like to meet a receptive audience. It's always good to see you. It means you're not behind my back. Introduce self. Pleased to meet you. I could tell by your outfit that you are no ordinary rube. Punny Bones, the name. Joke's a fair game. I'm a pro punster. And make the thief sign. You adopt the traditional thief sign. No one seems... You expect to get a funny response from him, right?
Good evening, ladies and germs. A funny thing happened on the way to Mordavia. I got here. I walked up to the innkeeper here and says to the guy, You know how lucky you are to have such a funny guy as myself staying here? The innkeeper says, No, but if you hum a few bars, I can fake it. You may as well laugh now, this act doesn't get any funnier. I sit down here for a meal and order some soup. When the waiter brings it in, I says, Waiter, there's a fly in my soup. The waiter says, Of course, that's the soup du jour. Am I going deaf in here? Or how can so many people sleep with all these lights on? Seriously, folks, I went to the doctor just the other day and he said he had some good news and some bad news. What's the good news, I asked? You only have three months to live, said the doc. That's terrible. What's the bad news? I said. The doc replied, I'm getting married. I know I had an audience when I came in here. Anyhow, show me a guy with a million kopecks, and I'll show you a guy who's rich. Hey, you only had to listen to this material. I'm the one who had to stand here and take it. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've been a swell bunch of seats. Whew. The gnome has stopped speaking. Maybe he's finished telling his joke. You think about applauding, but you're not quite sure if you heard the punchline yet. What did you think of my performance? Was I hilarious or what? Is this an inn or a cemetery? I've had livelier times at funerals. Some help you were. Couldn't you at least have smiled a little louder? It's nights like these that make me feel like an inept idiot and a lousy laughing stock. I'd make more money digging graves. But what? And get out of show business? Ask about Gnome. I'm staying at this inn for a while until I find something here. I got the last door down the hall. Visit me sometime. I'm sure we can have a few laughs together. That's the most nauseating proposition I think I've ever had. I got millions of them. Problem is, I can't remember most of them, and the ones I do remember should have been buried long ago. I used to be worth my wit in gold, but oh, it's a long story. Ask me about it some other time. In show business? Hey, my last tour was a great success. I outran everyone. But there's no business like show business. With me, the show must go on and on and on. And Gnome's home. Be they ever so humble, there's nobody stays home. I've been on the road so long, I have flat tires on my feet. I go wherever I can tell a good joke, and many places where I can't. And from here, we can also talk to the rest of the crowd. He, too, is a stranger to Mordavia. Hey, what am I, shredded wheat? If you're talking behind my back, at least have the courtesy to do it face to face. Ask about the inn. I try to keep people entertained here. So how come you weren't up on the stage instead of me? Ask about the innkeeper. I have not listened to such nonsense in all my life. You call this a life? Ask about the gnome. Well, you know I'm not a census taker over here, but there are no other gnomes in Mordavia. No wonder. Yeah, when they show up, there goes the neighborhood. We have no need for gnomes here. You guys are so narrow-minded, you could all look through a keyhole with both eyes. What gnome would want to work here? You guys have all the sense of humor of a wyvern with a hangover. At the risk of waxing poetic, what need have we of fools? Hey, you got a point. There are enough fools in here already to reach critical mass. If it pays to be ignorant, why are you guys so broke? And ask about the peasants. Somebody just shoot me. And just when I was gonna invite you to my party, there's always room for one boar. Oh, I'll tell you, he's rough, you know? Anyone could tell better jokes than that gnome did. Where's Shaky Green when you need him? Look, I'd argue with you, but I never engage in a battle of wits with an unarmed man. The guy's dying up there. I didn't get anything. Hey, how could you? If ignorance is really bliss, you're the world's happiest guy. 
Some of his insults are actually kind of funny, though. Fellas, is it just me, or is uh, Shecky's performance here lacking a certain sense of humor? Are you kidding? He was rough. Get a day job! You're right, and he wasn't very funny, either. What do you mean I wasn't funny? You guys wouldn't know a punchline if it hit you in the face! Well, let's go ahead and head back to our room. You unlock the door to... Let's go back down and see if we can get a meal. You get a fine meal of roast lamb garnished with red cabbage. Oh, and uh, liberally flavored with garlic. That actually doesn't sound too bad. They all turn to stare at you, then go back to talking. Uh, and I don't think we I get anything know. new out of him. Besides. Alright, let's see if the peasants have any new sarcasm and off-topic lines for us. Look, here we are, sitting around here, minding our own business, Cochise, and here you waltz up and interrupt us. Yeah, here's ten bucks. Get a real haircut, okay? You don't seem to realize. We're very important men around here. Right. Just because no one else seems to think so doesn't invalidate the point. You know, our little towns remained unchanged for generations. Oh, yeah. Our forefathers have always lived here in peace and quiet. Except for the time when the cult came here. Ooh, the cult. <laughs> well, they're all a bunch of strangers anyway. Yeah, very strange. They didn't have much to do with the town, you know? Yeah, hardly anything. Just building that monastery here and all moving inside, that's all. But, the cult did keep mostly to themselves. Yeah, he's right. No one had much to do with them. They were a very peaceful, quiet kind of cult. Yeah, really great people to be around, except for the strange noises and horrible screams that rose from the monastery at night. I'm probably gonna regret this, but okay, let's ask about the cult. That all happened many, many years ago. Oh yeah! The cult broke up. They've all got kids of their own now. Yeah, well, what about the Chernovi in the forest, huh? Come to think of it, no one knows if they're alive or what. Yeah, for all we know, they might just be wild stories to frighten little children and me. And what about the dark ones? Put a sock in it, will you? There are some things we must not speak about, Ivan. You know that. Well, excuse me all the pieces. And ask about rumors? We don't go for that rumor spreading stuff here, do we, Ivan? No way, Hans. Oh, never. Oh, except for that one little cocktail waitress, you know. But well, we don't gossip about our neighbors in Moldavia, do we, Ivan? Well, no, but uh, you did used to tell everyone about the time Olga caught Boris drinking with us when he was supposed to be minding the store. Hey, hey, hey. That wasn't gossip. It was just a semi-funny story. And Franz, what about the story you tell about the time you saw Yuri and Bella in the garden one night? What was that? Hey, Yuri, you're okay, all right? So, you see, we do not spread rumors here. And elephants. Pardon me while I wax eloquent, but... Once, many years ago, huge herds of fragrant elephants roamed freely in this particular valley. Oh, yeah. In the good old days, peanut farming would have made you a billionaire. Once... Long ago, I had a successful career, and I was also an elephant herder. You kidding? Everyone used to have a pet elephant. 
Oh yeah, I remember mine. I married her. Yeah, she was great for vacuuming up peanuts from your rugs. Not only that, but elephants are very clean and modest as well. They all just went bathing with their trunks, don't you know? Yeah, nice thing about elephants. Very easy to housebreak, you know? They hardly ever made mistakes. <laughs> Unless they got excited, okay? Unfortunately, elephants get excited easily. A lot of houses got broken that way. This really brings back sad memories. Please, let's talk about something uplifting like last year's famine. <laughs> okay, that bit was a funny improv. They all ignore you as usual. But I think we can go talk to Punny a bit. A voice from behind the door says, Whoops, sorry. Seems I forgot about my burglar alarm. Hope it wasn't too shocking for you. Hello, how are you? Come in and have a sit, why don't you? As you sit down, a rude noise comes from the chair seat. <laughs> Gets you every time! A million laughs! How are you? Good to see ya! Nice see you to drop in! Speaking of dropping in, did you hear the one about the bad waiter? Seems like he was always dropping in. Dropping in! Get it? Didn't think so. No one got a sense of humor anymore. <laughs> Not even me. The gnome likes to take a quick nightcap before he goes to bed. It makes the perfect cap to the gnome's jester costume. There's a nightstand by the bed with a single drawer. Somehow just looking at these garlic braids makes you smile. It's a braided, circular rug just like the one in your room, only funnier. The strange comedian you had the misfortune to listen to the other night sits on the bed. He looks at you with a twisted grin. Oh. The chicken seems to be made out of rubber. What's rubber, you ask? You also consider how it would taste cooked in garlic. Yeah, we can, in fact. The rubber chicken squeals as you pick it up and squeeze it. Well, you'll have to keep her now. You obviously rub her the right way. Rub her, get it? Because it's not an adventure game unless you have a rubber chicken. Alright, so go ahead and greet. Hey, welcome in to the inn. Pleased to meet you. Sit down, have a seat. Oh, we did that already, didn't we? <laughs> Thinking that the gnome might be one of the brethren, you make the thief sign. The gnome looks rather agitated. Boy, have you got the wrong gnome. I'm not into that kinky stuff, let me tell you. Okay, let's try and clear this up a bit. You tell about some of your adventures. What was that you were saying about saving Spielberg? You tell about your adventures in Spielberg. So you're the guy that made me lose my sense of humor. Listen, if you hadn't made Baba Yaga mad, I never would have told the joke that made her take my humor away. Oh, really? I ain't got no sense of humor. I can't get no sense of humor. And I try. Don't know why. Gotta fly. Say goodbye! What's the matter, you a music critic? So I can't tell a joke, sue me. I'm comedically challenged. A feeb of a fool, a dweeb dunce. As a matter of fact, I've been cursed. I'm vexed with a hex, so to speak. All right, ask about the curse. Pathetic, ain't it? I can't tell a joke if it kicked me in the teeth. Ever since I got Baba Yaga mad at me, I got the bad joke blues. Ask about Baba Yaga. She has no sense of humor whatsoever. Let me tell you, I was just telling the joke about how some hero got Baba Baby hopping mad and fit to be towed. How was I to know she was in the audience at the time? 
Anyhow, Baba Yaga stands up, says some bad poetry, and the next thing I know is my jokes are jumbled and my puns are pathetic. So here I am in Nowhere Land trying to locate Baba Yaga so as I can get the curse removed and my humor returned. Putin Tane, ask me again, I'll tell you my name. Seriously, folks, the name is Bones. Punny Bones. I'm just a jester. Professionally speaking, of course. Yeah, let's go jester. Hey, I'm a professional fool, so don't try this at home, kid. Unfortunately, more people laugh at me than at my jokes lately. It's hard to be hilarious when your sense of humor is defunct. Punny, you should ask about that. Making jokes is in my bones, make no bones about it. But my puns have been sort of boneheaded lately. This place is really dead, you know. I've had a livelier audience in the graveyard. What do they know about humor? They think a guy falling into a mud puddle is a major joke, like lots of yucks. Huh? Now, a man being tripped into a mud puddle, that's comedy. What do I hear? Let me see. Well, the talk of the town is you. No one knows how you got here or what are you doing. And they're still all a bit leery of strangers. You should see some of the looks they give me. You'd think they never saw a gnome before. Or you, for that matter. Alright, well that's all we can get out punny at the moment. Nice to see a friendly face around here. Catch you later, dud. So I ask you, what do you call a dinosaur crashing into a wall? Late for supper, of course! <laughs> See you later, crocodile! You unlock the door. Well, I think for once we will try and get a good night's sleep. You awaken as the sun begins to rise. And apparently we're not getting breakfast. Ah. And a new topics of conversation, so... The What is to tell the burger my so try So yeah, nothing new here. The headstone Anything new for my gore? Or get into hell. Not as much. Okay, well. He look At least we got some communication points for all that, I think. Yeah, 317. Climbing's boosted. Stealth is still slowly going up. Thing is, my intelligence is probably my highest stat at this point. You pick Let's go and get some strength training done. Your legs... After some rest. After some After some rest. There's only a certain amount. And like I said, I don't think we get any new conversation from the chief thief, but we can go ahead and give it a shot. Oh, so you are back! Did you pick up anything while you were out? Well, not as such, but... To tell them... You seem to... Peace.
All right, well, currently strength's at 343, so that has bypassed our intelligence. Our luck still hasn't gone up once since we got here. Of course, if we were that lucky, we wouldn't be here in the first place. But I think we will go ahead and stop this chapter here, and next time, we'll go see Dr. Cranium, and if memory serves correctly, we should get uh, another quest and a test. See you then.